conference. I'm Dave Watkins. Uh, if anyone has difficulty hearing, uh, please let us know. We do have microphones up here. Uh, some people would rather not use a microphone, but if anyone has difficulty hearing, we can definitely use one. So, um, I just have a few opening uh, remarks here before uh, we turn things over to the student groups. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, how many people uh, for, this is this your first D&E conference? Wow, great. How many people have been here? This is this your second? Okay. How about three or more? All right. Great. <laughs> so uh, I'm always asked, what, what does D80 stand for? And uh, it's actually a little bit vague. Uh, the D can stand for a lot of things. Uh, I think it mainly stands for design, but sometimes it involves uh, development, economic development, um, delivering goods and services to communities in need, uh, distributing information, disseminating information. Uh, so it can, it can be a lot of things. Uh, discovering new ways to do things that are appropriate for communities. And then what is the 80%? Well, we did a little analysis once um, to uh, kind of put our projects, the, the types of projects that the student groups are doing into perspective. And, and this shows a distribution of global income, uh, indicating that the richest 20% of people in the world have about 82% of the wealth. Uh, some people call this a champagne glass. I think it looks more like a margarita glass or a martini glass. <laughs> um, and, and we found that really our, our projects generally are for communities where the average income is something like $20 a day or less. Um, places in Central America, in Africa. Uh, our PCMI students certainly are working in communities that are down in, in this income level. Uh, we can talk a lot about global income distribution, but this is going to give you a little bit of background about where the name comes from. And uh, just a brief introduction to the various programs. This, this uh, little solar system graph I made uh, keeps growing every year. <laughs> I guess our solar system now got smaller. We have eight planets. I grew up learning about nine, but uh, you may recognize some of these. The Peace Corps Masters International Program, uh, the Pavlis Institute that does work globally, uh, the Consumer Products uh, Manufacturing <laughs> Enterprise, <laughs> Um, is joining us today. They have a project now in West Africa. Uh, this is a social enterprise class that John Gershenson teaches. You'll hear more about that. Uh, Engineers Without Borders, the Michigan Open Sustainability Technology Group, which we'll be speaking this morning. Uh, Global City, that raises awareness of international issues uh, and has guest speakers. And uh, International Senior Design. And I apologize if I, I left any out. I looked through the registration list, these were the, the programs that, that I recognize and I'm familiar with, and if I missed any, please inform me later. We also have a couple programs, this is a comet sort of shooting through here, uh, that are sometimes temporary because they involve external funding, uh, and we've had a few projects here that are funded by the EPA and their uh, People, Prosperity, and the Planet project, and we, and we have a group here today talking about that, the work they're doing with some external funding. Uh, sometimes we get funding from the National Science Foundation for International Research Experiences for Students. That's this one here. So um, a lot of different programs sort of lumped together, or, or not lumped together, but under this umbrella of D80. And uh, I'm really happy to, to be able to put on this forum for uh, discussion and exchange of ideas. Uh, lastly, why this uh, theme of community engagement? Uh, well, I think we probably have a lot of engineers in the room, designers. Uh, and, and it can be very frustrating for those of us that do technical work to see projects fail. We might think, wow, we have the perfect solution, technologically it's sound, you know, we can construct it, uh, we can even get it working, but then why does it stop working? Or why do communities not use it or maintain it? And I think the number one reason is that the community wasn't properly engaged in developing that design or that solution and then either they don't see the need for it, they're not motivated, they, don't, they didn't take ownership of the project to maintain it, or they want to maintain it, but they don't have the resources. It's either inappropriate because it's too expensive for them, they can't buy spare parts when things break down. So this is what we see a, a lot uh, around the world when we, when we do these types of projects. We go into different places, it's a new culture, it's very difficult to, to understand the community needs. 
And uh, so I, we, we need to work more on that. But uh, I think all of the groups today uh, have an aspect of community engagement in their work. And I'm sure that will come out uh, in the talks. Um, you know, even the Open Sustainability Technology Group, what are they doing? They're trying to provide information about technology, appropriate technology that, that is made available to help uh, communities find solutions. So, so with that, just a few logistics. Uh, this is the conference agenda, which I think you all have copies of. Um, but anyway, we'll have an opening session here with uh, four student talks. Uh, we'll take a short break. Uh, we'll come back for the keynote address. Uh, and then we'll have lunch over in the MUB, over in the uh, alumni lounge room. There'll be a buffet set up. Uh, I think we should have plenty of food for everyone. If you, if you registered in advance, then you got on the lunch list. Um, we can walk over there together. When we come back in the afternoon, uh, there'll be parallel sessions going on. In addition to talks in this room, we'll have um, two workshops or talks by faculty over in uh, Dow 642. Which way is 642? Over there. <laughs> Um, and so anyway, you're free to go to either one. Uh, if there's, I guess probably if you're in the workshop, you, you probably want to stick in that one, but you know, you can maybe attend part of that, see how it's being set up and run by the faculty who are doing that. Uh, it's Dr. Henkman and Dr. Gershenson. And then we'll just have some brief closing remarks, but I promise we'll be done by four. <laughs> so you can enjoy a little bit of, of the nice fall day that we have. <coughs> Okay, uh, well I will give an introduction to our keynote uh, a little bit later. This is just to give you a little, uh, a little prelude of what he's, we'll be talking about, the complexities of water, climate, and health. Uh, Jonathan was a graduate of our Peace Corps Master's program, so we're really happy to have him back. And uh, oh, lastly, I'll just point out some, some other lunch options. Uh, we'll be, let's see, we're here. I think probably everyone's familiar with campus, but if not, we're here in the Dow Building. Uh, we'll walk over to the Memorial Union building here, uh, sorry, right here, uh, for lunch, for the buffet, there's some other uh, sort of fast food options there. There's also a sandwich place here.